Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is finally upon us, and if you're watching this, you probably have the game or you're planning on picking it up soon. For those who may be new to the genre of the game, there will be some mechanics to get used to, as Age of Calamity is a departure from the typical Zelda experience. With that in mind, here are 7 need to know tips for getting started on your new Hyrule adventure. Number 1. Switch between characters and place them strategically. Early on in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, you get the option to switch between playable characters on the fly. While it's great fun to try out new characters in each battle, you'll also have the ability to call up the map and order your characters to different parts of the battlefield. Since you can switch between your characters at any time, this means that you can strategically place them in different corners of the map, and switch between the characters to achieve location-specific objectives faster. Although for tougher fights, you may want to call the team back together. Number 2. Keep an eye out for Korok Seeds just like in Breath of the Wild, suspicious objects or locations in Age of Calamity can contain Koroks. It may be more difficult to keep track of the little green creatures while you battle away, but if you take the time to explore and keep a keen eye out, you'll be sure to find some. Collecting Korok seeds will allow you to expand your weapon inventory slots, making it well worth your time to poke around every nook and cranny of the map. Number 3. Smash everything. Some old habits never die, and it holds true in Age of Calamity. Breaking various items strewn across the map, such as crates, can usually yield some useful items and ingredients for crafting. The process is even simpler in Age of Calamity, as any dropped items simply fly straight to you. Be sure to unleash Link's inner menace, as these items will give you a wealth of bonuses like health items to use during combat and the ability to craft food for health and attack buffs. Any rupees you find can be used to acquire new weapons, weapon upgrades, or even pay to level up your character to avoid unnecessary grinding. Number 4. Don't spam attacks. It pays to think about your moves in battle. Characters like Impa can use enemies to build up their number of usable clones. Special rune abilities like remote bombs can be used to thin out huge crowds. Dodging mini bosses' attacks at the last second opens up the chance to use a slow motion fury attack, as you might recognize from Breath of the Wild. That can shatter enemies' defenses. Likewise, mini bosses will often have telegraphed symbols to indicate their weaknesses right as they wind up for a big attack. So wait to use those special attacks whenever they're needed most. Number 5. Mind your surroundings. As mentioned earlier, there are plenty of boxes to break for rupees and ingredients in Age of Calamity. However, there's also a lot more to each area of Hyrule than this. Trees can be taken down to get wood, and chests can be found containing weapons too. Enemy outposts that aren't part of the main objective can be found off the beaten path and tackled to earn extra XP and loot. Paying attention to the environment helps in combat too. For example, using the Sheikah Slate's Cryonis ability on a body of water will immediately freeze any nearby enemies. Along with that, Magnesis can turn metal boxes into weapons, explosive barrels will do massive damage to mini bosses if you can lure them close enough, and you can even kick off of any wall or vertical surface for a quick getaway with the paraglider. Number 6. Do the side quests. Once you gain access to the Hyrule World map, you'll quickly notice some small yellow icons. Many of these are optional side quests that let you trade your acquired items for a variety of useful benefits. Some of these can give a character an extra heart or an extended combo attack, while others can provide you with new food recipes for stat buffs and even access to shops like a blacksmith. Be sure to pay attention to what is available on the map after each mission so you don't miss out on a host of great upgrades. Icons for the quests that you can complete will glow. If you don't have the materials needed for the side quest yet, use the Sheikah Radar, which is unlocked from the early quest called Needed Researchers in Chapter 2. Completing side quests is especially important early on when the recommended level for quests jumps up to around 5 or 6 all the way to 16. Make the most out of what's available to you early in the game and give your group of characters the best gear possible for the fights to come. And lastly, number 7, make the most of those menus. Between missions, you can customize your characters. Changing your weapons and consuming food for boost to your health and attack power are all a vital part of how the mission might play out. For example, a speed boosting meal could be just what you need to escape the blast of a guardian. You should also be mindful of the party that you're bringing into missions. 
view their combo attacks and unique moves, and even check what materials will be obtainable from the mission ahead. Knowledge is power, and getting to know the unique strengths of each character and what items you could gain later in side quests you've had your eye on is essential. But that's all the tips we have for you today. If you like videos like this, or maybe you like early reviews and previews on Nintendo Switch games, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, hit that thumbs down. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.